second application of factoring. So today's the 16th. So a, ra a rational expression I'm going to, so this is chapter 7. Rational expressions. A rational expression is a ratio of two polynomials. So rational expression is a ratio of two polynomials. And here we have examples. 1 over x, 2x minus 4 over x minus 1, 1 minus x over 2x. All these are examples of rational expressions. The question is, is this a rational expression? The answer is no, because it does not have x in the denominator. So this can be rewritten as 1 half times x, which is 0.5x, which is linear. So if an expression does not have x in the denominator, it cannot be considered a rational expression. OK. Now, in the past, we talked about something like this. Let's say we had a complex number, right? 1 plus 3i divided by 3. Am I allowed to simplify 3 from here with 3 from here? Very good. That's not allowed because this 3 is part of a term which is added to another term. So the first note here is simplify only factors. If you want to write not, comma, not terms. Factors, comma, not terms or pieces of a term or from pieces from terms factors, not terms. Okay, what do we say about 5 divided by 0? We use a fancy word for this. We know it does not exist, but we'd like to use a fancy word called very good. This is true for rational expressions. Division by 0 is undefined. Division by 0 is undefined. Last note. A rational expression is undefined when its denominator is 0. Exactly. A rational expression is undefined when its denominator is 0. Perfect. That's all I needed for now. Factors. Factors, not terms, or pieces of a term, or terms. Sure. Very good. So now we have several examples here in which we are only asked to simplify. Before we attempt these problems, I have another note for you. Would you agree that 5 divided by 5 is 1? So this denominator, is it 0? Do I have to write that 5 does not equal 0? I know that 5 is not 0. I don't have to write this. Correct? OK, what about x divided by x? It's definitely 1. But now I have a condition to write. Only if exactly which I did not have to do with for numbers, because 5 is not 0. No one can change 5 into 0. But here, x could be 0. So the correct answer is not 1, but it's 1 only if x is not 0. So this is called, when I have to write something like this, because this will not exist otherwise, this condition is called the restriction on the variable, or on x. So x is restricted, cannot float freely, in other words. It can take any value except 0. So that's why when we I stated here state restrictions on variables, it means you cannot simplify before you write the restriction. So must write restrictions before we simplify. So let's look at the first one. 
The first one I have 16x squared y divided by 24xy to the third. I will not touch anything before I write, this is a product, they are all factors, before I write a restriction for x and a restriction for y. What would x be restricted to? Or what can x cannot be? Or and, and what can y not be? Of course, right? x cannot be 0, y cannot be 0. x, comma, y cannot be 0. These are the only restrictions. I will not write that 24 shouldn't be 0 because I know 24 is not 0. Okay, now I'm ready to simplify. 16 and 24 can be divided by 8. 16 divided by 8 is 2. 24 divided by 8 is 3. What do I do with x? I take away an x from the top, and I take away an x from the bottom. What can I do with y? I remove a y from the top, and I remove a y from the bottom, and I have y squared left in the denominator. So now what is the simplified form of this expression? That's it. 2x over 3y squared, but the answer includes this. I caution you that your book does not show that. It is incorrect. So the correct solution is this. This rational expression, it's rational because it has variables in the denominator. Its rational expression simplifies to 2x over 3y squared with the condition that x and y are never 0. In the same way, we'll address the other 3. So 5 minus 2x over 2x minus 5. That's the reason why in chapter 6 I said everything in descending order. Everything remove the negative leading coefficient. Always. So the bottom is okay, but the top is not. So I will rearrange it. And now it's not because of the negative leading coefficient that I will factor out. And I will put it in front of the fraction line. After I factor out negative 1 at the top, what should I get left in the numerator? Careful. Well, after I pull out the negative 1, I pull out a negative 1, what is, what is left in parentheses? 2x. So negative 1 times the quantity is negative 2x. Which quantity? Good. Negative 1 times another quantity has to give us positive 5. Oh, negative five. Right. Is that clear? Yes. And now this minus can go in front of the fraction line. <laughs> so 2x minus 5. I know you may be tempted to simplify. You cannot simplify before you state how many restrictions. I don't have x in the denominator. I have 2x minus 5 in the denominator. So 2x minus 5 cannot be 0. I move 5 and divide by 2. So the restriction is 5 halves. Now I'm free to simplify after I state the restriction. So I'll simplify 2x minus 5. Please write 1 so you don't think it's 0. By 2x minus 5 and please write 1 and I don't want you to think it's 0. So then this equals what? Right. But the correct answer is the whole thing. So this expression simplifies to negative 1 only when, when x does not equal 5 halves. That's the same thing. It's the same thing. But we prefer just solve to solve that. OK, let's look at one more, and then we can leave the last one for later when we finish. So a squared plus 7a minus 8 divided by a squared plus 6a minus 7. So here's what I would like to do. I want to simplify a squared with a squared, um, an a with an a, a 7 with a 7. What do you think?
the book out and start a new book. So if what did we write here? So my question is, am I allowed to do something like this? Is a squared a factor at the top? It's a term because it's added to another term and subtracted from another term. So am I allowed to do this? No. Never. So then I rewrite the problem. Was it plus? No, it was minus. Sorry. Divided by a squared plus 6a minus 7. So then what am I trying to do then here? That's why if I don't remember chapter 6, I'm in big trouble. Exactly. That's why keywords in math in general are factor simplify, factor simplify, factor simplify. Please remember those two. So how would you factor the top? A plus A, A minus 1. Very good. Indeed, A plus 8, A minus 1. How do I factor a denominator? Very good. How many restrictions will you give me now for A? You will give me A not equal? One. Yes, and A not equal? Negative, uh, negative 7. We don't state restrictions for the top. Oh, okay. Let's go back to our note. Only division by 0 is undefined. The numerator is free to do whatever it wants. OK, so then now I'm ready to simplify common factors, one from the top with one from the bottom. Is there anything that I can get rid of now? That's it. What is the simplified form then? Very good. Assuming the conditions are fulfilled. Now I want two questions for you here. They're not on the handout. I'm going to put them on the handout. But they're not right now. Number one, here's my first question. Which values of a make a squared plus 7a minus 8 over a plus 6a minus 7 undefined? Which values of A will make this expression undefined? If A equals negative 1, negative 1, negative exactly. 1 or negative 7. Excellent. Final question. Find the domain of A squared plus 7A minus 8 over A squared plus 6A minus 7. I know what A cannot be. You already gave me those values. And we know what values make the expression undefined. So what is allowed then? And how do I write it? In mathematical terms. So domain is? Negative union to one and then one to infinity. Two key concepts moving forward in math. Since these are the numbers that make the expression undefined, then neg when a is one, when a is negative seven, this whole thing does not exist. We like to say it's undefined. Here's another concept based on the same thing. Find the domain. Well, if these two make the expression undefined, everything else is allowed. How do I write everything else? Exactly in these terms. What does this say? Everything but negative 7 and 1. 
but this is put in mathematical terms. Excellent. Thank you. Let's see how we multiply. We'll come back, so let's make a little note on this one. We did not get the chance to do it, so let's move on to multiplication and we'll come back. So how do I multiply two fractions? Well, if I have to multiply A over B by C over D, all I do is multiply the tops and multiply the bottom. There is nothing different here. It's just that the expressions will look more difficult because there is a variable in there. Or maybe two. Or maybe three. So, but nothing else. It's the same concept. Okay. So I'm going to leave this one because we just did a similar problem. So I like to look at two of those, So and then we'll come back. Please choose. I will definitely would like to do C, and then choose either B or D, and then we'll come back. Promise to the other ones. Choose one more. D. Very good. So let's do C and D. Yes. Good. So in C, I have 16 plus 6x <coughs> minus x squared over x squared minus 10x minus 24 multiplied by x squared minus 6x minus 27 divided by x squared minus 17x plus 72. I want to draw your attention to one simple numerical example before we start. If you ask me to multiply uh, 12 by 16 by 17 and divide by 17 times 8 times 9. I am not going to multiply them first. I'm going to try to simplify as much as possible first. Like 17 divided by 17, uh, like 8 divided by 8, and this with 3. 3 and 4. And I get 8 divided by 3. I'm not going to get a huge expression or a huge number and then start, okay, I'm now I'm divided by 2, now I'm divided by 3. No, no. So the idea is the same here. Simplify first before you multiply, if possible. If you can't simplify anything, then there is nothing we can do, so we have to multiply. But the idea is always, always simplify first. There is nothing to simplify at this stage because I only have terms. And when I look at these four polynomials, I definitely like three of those, but I don't one of them, based on what we discussed in chapter six. Which one I don't like? The top, top, top left. So this, first of all, needs to be put in descending order, but then I still don't like it because it will, be, it will have a negative leading coefficient, so I have to factor that out. What is left in parentheses? Squared minus six x minus Very good. X squared minus six x minus sixteen. So now I can start the whole procedure. So the top is negative blah blah blah. I put negative and I need the factored form. And the factored form of x squared minus 6x minus 16 is the trinomial descending order, no negative leading coefficient, I took care of it. No greatest common factor, no special product, but one is the leading coefficient. Boom. Very good. Excellent. I need the denominator now. x squared minus 10x minus 24. Very good. Top of the next one. Very good. And the last one. It's a lot of writing. I should have warned you. 
There is a lot of writing in this in this chapter. A lot. A lot. Sorry. Last one, the bottom. Of course you can so the product is seventy two. Correct. Correct. How many restrictions will you state before we simplify? Yes. Not equal. Yes. Yes. Very good. Are there common factors? Please remember, you cannot simplify top with top. You cannot simplify bottom with bottom. You have to simplify a common factor from the top with a common factor from the bottom. So what will that be? And always write 1, because you may believe it's 0, but it's not 0. X, minus <laughs> x plus 2 divided by x plus 2 is 1 after I stated the restriction. Anything else goes away. Good. One from the top, one from the bottom. Is there anything else? Yes, you can. One from the top, one from the bottom. So there is a minus in front of the fraction line because there is a minus up here. And when what is left at the top? It's, if they are not multiplied, they are not factors, and I cannot simplify. So they have to be multiplied. So 1, 1, 1, x plus 3. x minus 12 times 1 times 1 times 1, x minus 12, assuming all restrictions are fulfilled. It now that they're not in the parentheses anymore, can you factor the 3 with the 12, or do you use it like that? X is a term, 3 is a term, X is a term, 12 is a term. I can't touch it. This is it. See how heavily this is based on Chapter 6? Okay. That's why I had to review it. Okay, let's look at the next one. 2x squared plus 5x plus 2 over... 2x squared plus 7x plus 3 times x squared minus 7x minus 30 over x squared minus 6x minus 40. They are all in the correct order, but two of those are much more involving, more work required for them. Which two of those four? Right. Why? Leading coefficient is not 1. So let's take them aside because these two will not require too much energy, but these two will. So let's take 2x squared plus 5x plus 2 and figure out what to do with it first.
how do we address this and what how do we change it? Okay, so you're way ahead of me. Very good. No, that's okay. 2x plus 1 and x plus 2. And the other one is 2x plus 1 and x plus 3. Very easy to check if you have any doubts. 2x squared, positive 4 plus 1 is 5. And 1 times 2 is 2. 2x squared, plus 6 plus 1 is 7. 1 times 3 is 3. Very good. Good. So now the other two. Now, in order to um, maybe straighten the, the idea here, remember this is basically this. So saying that I can simplify this x with this x, it's saying like I, I could simplify this x with this x. See? So here. Of course I cannot simplify these two because I cannot simplify these two. So this expression can be rewritten like this. And since I cannot simplify this with this, there is the same reason why I cannot simplify this with this. So keep that in mind. So how do I factor the last two so I can finish it up? Very good. The product is negative 40. The sum is negative 6. Done. The product is negative 30, and the sum is negative 7. Excellent. How many restrictions will you give before start simplifying? Remember, you're, you will not have all the restrictions if you simplify first and then state restrictions at the end. You can do that. Restrictions before you simplify. This will help you in the next course very much. You will see what happens with these functions. So, x not equal, we move 1 to the other side and we divide by 2. Agreed? Okay. Anything goes away, I really hope. Indeed. Always write 1, because otherwise you may think that you multiply by 0, and you will write 0 by mistake, so it's, it's wise to put 1 every time you simplify. So then, what is the simplified form, including the restrictions? Right. Can we further simplify x plus 2 over x plus 4? No, because there are two terms at the top, no factors. x plus 2 cannot be factored anyway, in any way, shape, or form. X plus 4 cannot be factored, so there are no more factors. Okay, so uh, we left these two to come back to. I'd like to move on to division. Let me refresh our memory on how to divide numerical, ex numerical fractions. So if I have A over B divided by C over D, I copy the first fraction, which is A over B, and then what do I do? It, not the negative, that will be the slope of the perpendicular lines. You're right. And then d over c, right? Just multiply. Okay, so now this is again a product, so it's a times d over b times c. Okay? Same procedure, same mechanism, everything the same for rational expressions. However, there is one minor twist here, and the twist is I have the division, I have to state restrictions for the denominator, and then when I flip the other fraction, I get a new denominator that I have to have state restrictions on. So I state restrictions on the division, and then after I flip, I have one more. Or if I have two factors, then two more. Okay? That's the only twist. So let's choose. We have four examples, and we leave a couple, and we'll do a couple. 
You choose. Okay, I'll choose definitely C, and you choose another one. B, you said so, D or D? D. D as in dog. Okay, very good. So we leave these two and we'll come back. All the same, so let's start with C. 8, eight plus 2x minus x squared over x squared plus 7x plus 10 divided by x squared minus 11x plus 28. Everything divided by x squared minus x minus 42. I need to refresh your memory on one thing. When we have a division of two rational uh, expressions or fractions, you cannot simplify across. You have to wait till you change it into a product, and then you are allowed to simplify across. So in a division, you can touch. You can simplify the fraction by itself if it has a common factor. You can simplify the fraction by itself if it has a common factor, but not across in a division. Okay. Good. So for now, I like these three. Of course, I don't like the top left. So I'm going to rewrite it as negative x squared plus 2x plus 8. And then, remember what was not mentioned in chapter 6, and now they say, oops, we forgot. Well, I can't do that. And I was going to say, I, I was going to remind Heather, everything you did on that problem with t, whatever, always remember, don't mess with a negative leading coefficient when you solve an equation. Always divide, or at least divide by negative 1. Because you may forget the denominator with blah, 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 negative 2a in the, in the quadratic formula. You didn't. I'm not saying you did. Yeah. But yeah, right, always. Always fifth factor simplify. Always keep that in mind. Those are two key words in anything you do in math. OK, so here I factor on negative 1. What do I have left? negative. And now I want the factor form so I can finish up with the top and, and go back to the problem from the beginning. Perfect. So now I can go back from scratch. I will write the top, as you said, negative x minus 4x plus 2. Now the denominator, the numerator, and the denominator. Cannot be minus because the minus, yes no. right perfect. Very good, and the last one. Very good. I cannot change it into a product just yet because I have to state four restrictions and then I can change it. So x not equal. Perfect. I am allowed in a division to simplify the fraction by itself. That, that will cut back on writing. I can do that, but not across. So I will simplify the x plus 2 with the x plus 2 and write 1 and 1. They are in the same fraction. And I can simplify x minus 7 with x minus 7. They are in the same fraction. Now I will copy the negative that I have in front, in front of the fraction line. 
I have x minus 4 at the top, x plus 5 at the bottom. And now I will multiply by what? Very good. This is a new factor that I did not have before. x minus 4 was not in the denominator before, but now it is. So I have to add one more restriction to this list. Exactly. Now I'm allowed to freely continue simplifying. And since this is a product, I can also simplify across. Anything else goes away. Right, so uh, yes, x minus 4 will go away. So the simplify form is negative in front of the fraction line. Indeed, x plus 6 over x plus 5. Of course, all this is included. Any questions on division? OK, let's do the last one here for now. 2x squared minus 3x minus 20 over. 2x squared minus 7x minus 30 divided by 2x squared minus 5x minus 12 and over 4x squared plus 12x plus 9. A lot of work, right? We have to take each polynomial aside and completely factor it. So please take the first one and give me the factor form. And then the second one, third, fourth. If you need my help, please let me know. Do we have the first one? I know. Two x plus five 
x minus 4, very easy to check, 2x squared minus 8 plus 5, perfect. First one is done. x squared minus 7, x minus 30, 2x plus 5, x minus 6, very easy, negative 12 plus 5, yep, perfect, second one is done. So 2x squared minus 5x minus. So 2x squared minus 8 play. Yep, perfect. And the last one. Remember, never skip the question, special product. Never skip that. It's always easier if it is a special product. But is it? We look at the first and the last, and we conclude that potential what? So it's 2x plus 3, everything squared. But I have to check the middle term, because this has three terms. 2 times 2 is 4 times 3 is 12x. True. So we have everything factored now. Keep it in the division form uh, still. 2x plus 5, x minus 4 over 2x plus 5 times x minus 6 divided by 2x plus 3 times x minus 4 over 2x plus 3 everything squared. We cannot simplify before we do what? Yes x is restricted, it cannot be everything or anything. This is not a polynomial function. It's not a linear or quadratic. It's way more difficult. So then x cannot be good. Yes. Excellent. In a division, I cannot simplify across, but I can simplify each fraction by itself, and I can. How will you simplify the first one? So I don't have to write it again. 1 and 1. So then I have x minus 4 over x minus 6. Good. Now, is there anything I can get rid of from the second one alone by itself? Yes. Right. And now I flip it. What do I write? Multiply it by? Yes. Yes. Indeed. Now I have a new denominator, a new factor in the denominator that I did not have before, so I have to continue the list with one more restriction that just popped up because I flipped that fraction. Yes. Excellent. So now I'm ready to 
take out what else? That's it. In the simplified form of all this expression, this was hard. It took us six, seven minutes, mm -hmm. just this problem. Okay, so the simplified form is? Of course, assuming, again, I caution you that your book does not show restrictions. They completely ignore the fact that denominators could be zero. Um, as long as we can, so we can agree, if you remember, we said, when we looked at chapter 10, we said the square of x squared is the absolute value of x if x is any real number. But if right now I say to you, from now on, we assume that all conditions are fulfilled, but at least we have to be in the clear and understand that x over x is not 1. x over x is 1 only if x is not 0. Once we have that in our minds, then we can decide, OK, now from now on, we'll say that all conditions are fulfilled and we know what we mean. I don't want to do that. And I'll tell you why. Because when we get here, when we solve equations, the restrictions will be extremely helpful. I will not have to go back and check. So that's why I want to at least keep it till here. And then on these ones, we can assume, because there are so many variables in here, that we don't really have to stay restriction on all of them. So I only uh, request restrictions when you have to deal with something with one variable. Okay, <clears throat> good. So now we know several things. What a rational expression is, how to simplify it, how to multiply rational expressions, and how to divide rational expressions and also state these restrictions, and how to find domain of rational expressions. Now we want to add. Adding and subtracting is way more difficult than multiplying and dividing, right? How? How come? Here it is. I know that 1 half plus 1 third I would love to be able to say 2 over 5. Uh, that's not possible. I have to find the least common denominator, which is 6. I have to change this by multiplying the top by 3. I have to change this by multiplying the top by 2. So then I have 3 times 1 plus 2 times 1. So this is 5 sixths. So many more steps than when I multiply and divide. So that's why adding and subtracting will be more difficult. The first th two examples, and we are going to do both, first two examples are easy. Why? Denominators are the same. Denominators are the same. But look at all this. Way more difficult. So keep in mind, multiplication and division, I can do all day. Addition and subtraction require more effort. Okay? So well, I'm